Да, спасибо большое и спасибо за приглашение. Это мне очень приятно да, выступить здесь. И, а, потому что я думаю, что это первый раз, что я, я доложу по а, своей, своей теме. А, извините, если вот я... А, извините, пожалуйста. Наверное, надо громче. А, громче, громче, да. Пожалуйста. Нет, нет, нет. Хорошо. И, ну, спасибо, Александр. Я просто А, я, я не включил даже. А, не включил. А вы знаете, ну, Может быть, нам сделать микрофон, действительно, нам будет легче. Микрофон. А, это вот, окей. Вот, думаю, работает. Ду а, слышно? Хорошо. А, я, я... А, лучше, потому что это было слишком далеко. А, я извиняюсь, потому что я бы не мог дорожить на русском. Это я слишком так редко делаю. И я буду на английском. Ну, пожалуйста, если что-то непонятно, просите, спрашивайте, пожалуйста. Могу. Окей. Okay. Вот. Uh, well, now switch to English. Uh, uh, Well, I, I will present here uh, um, uh, the words are coming in Russian now. I will present here uh, the, um, the same the theme uh, of uh, a research I did during more than 20 years. And I, I came here in uh, Leningrad, it was Leningrad at this time in 19... Uh, 91, it was still Leningrad at the beginning of my stay, it was St. Petersburg at the end of my stay, and I, I, I was here to begin this study, this comparative and transnational study, uh, uh, with uh, working in the archive of uh, the Putilov factory, Red Putilov factory, as, uh, as it was said at this moment, because I was studying the, uh, the, um, the late 20s, and the beginning of the 30s. And I would have done, with a great pleasure, a whole conference, a whole lecture on the history of the Soviet Union. But from the point of view of the history of the leaders, uh, more exactly of uh, the history of Rukovaditeli, Vajdiei, Nachalnikov, and так далее. But uh, I, 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 I'd like to, to, to present the, the The, the main theme of this study, which is a study about the history of the 20th century. It's a kind of global history of the 20th century uh, from the point of view of the history of authority. What, what was at stake in the history of authority? Uh, when one speaks about, uh, about uh, Vajdiach, about leaders, about Führer, it's easy to think only about the cult of the leader, the cult of the Führer, the, the cult of personality, of course. But I wanted to make an his, a history which was not only a history of totalitarian uh, countries, but also a, a common history of totalitarian countries and of capitalist liberal countries. Because it's, it seems to me that it was something very, uh, not only uh, close, but even something very common in the history of uh, all the big countries they made, they, or they begin to, to, make, to make the Industrial Revolution. There, there was something in common, a fascination for science, of course, a, fascina a fascination for rationalization, a fascination for, for uh, rationality applied to industry, uh, rationality applied to government, uh, scientific government, and so, and so on. But, uh, and all of this has been widely 
uh, studied while, while they worked. They, they, they are, they are thousands of study about organization, about, uh, for example, uh, uh, scientific management, uh, not Naučnaya Organizacja Truda. And I just heard from Alexander that this place was a, a place where it was thought, it was, it was thought about uh, Naučnaya Organizacja Truda uh, in the, from the 20s onwards. Uh, so, uh, the, I could say the theme of my study is the role of the figure of the leader uh, in the first part of the 20th century, uh, but second, seen from a point of view of practice, from a point, from a point of view of action. Uh, from a point of view of the, the materiality of action and, uh, and practice. Uh, it's a reason why I'm rather close to some discussions you have here, if I understood well uh, what's happening in a European University in, in St. Petersburg. Uh, so, uh, I, I brought my, my book, it's my, the last exemplar I would have. Uh, uh, so I cannot leave it here. I'm very sorry. It's an exemplar I gave uh, to somebody. Uh, uh, just for you to have a look on this and, and see the, what kind of work it is. And uh, what I'm, so you can have a look, please. Um, so I would like to say, uh, to begin with, that the history of, uh, of practices uh, in the 20th century is not a question of principle, is not a question of intellectual fashion, uh, because there, there was a big stake in the, tw in the 20th century uh, with uh, governing practices. Uh, the, this century was a century of the control of practices at very large scales. Uh, control by organization, by, very by a very large organization, by large scheme of thought, uh, invention of devices a la Foucault, for example, the, the organization devices or practice devices, which are material, which are also intellectual, which are, which are organizational. And uh, and there were a full bench of uh, new discipline of action. They were f based off uh, about a pretension to scientific rationality. Uh, and, uh, one can, study some, uh, one can study this from an organization point of view, uh, but I, uh, and it's something I did in my pre pre previous works, but uh, what struck me is that there, there, were, there was a very important presence of the, of the figure of the chef, of the leader, of the Führer in the practices, in the industrial practices, in the, in the political practices, and this was something common uh, in a large uh, series of countries. When I'm talking with uh, control of practices at a large scale, of course I'm, I'm thinking about what terrorism was scientific management not Naučnaya Organizacija Trula. It was, the stake of Naučnaya Organizacija Trula was, was to, uh, to give the, the management the, the, the control of the, the, the slightest move, the slightest movement of the workers or, or of uh, employees at the workbench. So it was, uh, there was a, a second very important of those discipline of uh, uh, practices, which was Bolshevism. Uh, 
Bolshevism and Taylorism have in common the, the, the will to control practices through rationality, through an organization of specialists. They, they are trained to, uh, for dissent with, uh, with science, with inquiry methods into, uh, into the, the fields, uh, into the, 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 the workshop or into the masses. Uh, we could join also, for example, uh, psychoanalysis, because psychoanalysis is another at another uh, at an, another scale, at the scale of the individual, also devices with, with a position to rationality and a position for working, working uh, psychology, working, and uh, and there is an exchange, uh, elab uh, an elaboration, which is an exchange. Uh, where uh, the people in charge of rationality is analyzing, interpreting the, the speech of the, of the patient. Uh, it's also a device to organize some kind of a practice of an action uh, for both, for, uh, for the, the therapist and for the patient. Well, actually it was not the same scale, even if this discipline had a worldwide uh, diffusion, exactly as had uh, the terrorism, exactly as had uh, the, the Bolshevism, uh, uh, about the same time, about with the same chronology. So, but I would like to 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 to, uh, to reflect. Uh, about the question of the of the leader within this situation, uh, it it has not been studied studied by the historians. I don't know why. Uh, it's very complex. It's a very complex question. The question uh, to apprise why the historian uh, avoided to to work about a general question of the, of the chef, of the chef, a general question of the leader, a general question of the chef. It was easy, of course, to work on, uh, on the cult of the great leaders. The great leaders are very important uh, figure, uh, very important uh, personage of the 20th century, of course. But the question is not the, the great leader only. It's also the, f uh, the full scale of medium leaders, of middle leaders, of uh, of uh, small leaders, and if I take the if I take the the, um, the example of the Soviet Union, for example, it's very interesting to see that uh, the role of the Rukovaditel is emphasized from the very beginning of the 20th century. I, I'll get back uh, on this question, but not only the Rukovaditel, but also the voyage, uh, political voyage. Uh, and, 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 and Rukovaditel, the, 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 the word Rukovaditel, the word uh, voyage, were uh, of the utmost importance in the Bolshevik uh, discourse from the very beginning of Bolshevism. But, and uh, it, be, it began. Uh, uh, very spread discourse and all the, in books, in the Pravda, and uh, everything. And what was interesting to me to, is to, to, to watch the process of uh, affirmation of, of a figure of the leader, but f f f uh, from a very special point of view here. And uh, uh, the, the, the Russian vocabulary is very rich in, uh, in uh, talking about what it is to direct, what it is to uh, govern, what it is to manage. Uh, there, there is a very rich vocabulary which disappeared in the, uh, uh, nearly in the, uh, in the 30s. Uh, and, and the word Nachalnik uh, became uh, very spread and replaced a lot of words we were finding in the factories. For example, as I said, I was working in a Putilov factory, and the word of Natchalnik was replacing Zavier Duyushi, Rasparia and so on. 
And it was an, an, an emphi, emphi, emphasis about uh, an, uh, a society made from uh, hierarchies uh, led by, uh, by uh, Nachalniki. Uh, I would like to, to go a little bit further uh, in, 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 in drawing uh, the trajectories of some countries. Because uh, what I'm saying about Soviet Union uh, uh, was seen also in other countries. If I take the, if I take the uh, United States, uh, I was struck in, uh, in uh, working on the history of, uh, of the leader, of the leadership in the United States, I was struck by, uh, by the fact that uh, the world, the very world leadership is not a world of the 19th century. It's, it is a world which began, uh, which began its career in the 20th century from the very end of the 19th century, actually. The, uh, but uh, uh, there were uh, interesting, impo very important lectures uh, in the last 10 years of the 19th century, the first 10 years of the 20th century. Uh, for example, there is a lecture about how to, uh, how to, um, to define what could be a political leadership. The concept didn't exist before. And, uh, and, uh, and it was a, a lecture repeated three or four times in the United States by a young professor of law who was to, be, to, to, to become uh, president of the United States, Woodrow Wilson. But there is not only politicians, not only professor, law professors, there were also economists, psychologists, uh, religious writers. Uh, they took part of this movement, intellectual movement of thinking uh, what could be uh, leadership. Uh, it is, and so leadership as a concept is a concept of the 20th century. And, and it's not, a, and we, we, we can say it's not a word of the English language, it's the word of the uh, American language. It's uh, very, because it, it is bearing American values. Uh, in, 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 the, in this first discourse on leadership, uh, it was very important to, to, to underline that the United States was created by free people, leaders, and so on. And what they were building, it was a country about to be the leader of the world. And it, it was very present in, in the concept of leadership since the very beginning. In, in Germany, we are accustomed to think about the Führer, about the Führung, uh, which is the leadership. To, uh, but also, uh, even if those words did exist, uh, well, before, just the, like the world, uh, the world, uh, the world uh, leader in English, uh, the world existed. The word Führer did exist also uh, since very long. But at the end of the uh, 19th century, it was just uh, uh, designing very small functions of uh, travel guides or machinists and so on. It has n absolutely no uh, political meaning. Uh, the, the very model of authority was the monarchist model, the model of the Kaiser. Uh, the ent uh, uh, entrepreneur had to be uh, the monarch of uh, his uh, company. Uh, Einer muss herrschen. Uh, as uh, said, uh, management uh, management uh, um, uh, books at the late 19th century, but since the very beginning of the uh, of the 20th century, well before the Nazis, National Socialists, and so on, the the the, the concept of Führer, of Führer uh, was beginning to to become very important, and it was asked to the Kaiser to be 
the, fur, the Führer of the development. Uh, people were saying we, we, we need uh, a Kaiser who would be a Führer for, for whom to, to, to go through the fire. So, and, uh, so that, that, that's something which is also uh, beginning in the 20th century as a discussion of the society with herself. It's a social discussion about what it is authority. That's the same in France. The same in France, you, you, you have uh, a, a completely new literature, for example, in the army about uh, authority, or to, about what it is to be an officer, uh, what, what ought to be the, the social role of the officer, and after that you have uh, new discourses about the social role of the engineer uh, uh, and how uh, the engineer has to be a leader, not only an engineer, but a leader, uh, and so on. And the word, the French word chef, which, were, which is also a very old word, was at this time only uh, designing, uh, only um, pointing the, the, the head, the very head of uh, social institutions, social organization. Since the very beginning of the 20th century, also, uh, the, the word chef is beginning to, to become uh, uh, a general word for all the bearer of uh, a slight piece of authority in institutions. It seems to be that the same discussion uh, was also in Russia. If you take the, the very well-known uh, book of Pabiedonostsev, uh, Maskovsky Zbornik, which is a book of uh, 1896, uh, Pabiedonostsev is asking uh, that Russia would have more nastayashiye uh, pravitelye, rukavaditelye. There is a reflection about the, the lack of uh, authentic rukovaditili. Uh, uh, but in, from this point of view, you, you have another uh, uh, proposal from uh, another, uh, another place, another place of the, uh, of the landscape, which is Lenin's proposal. If you take the, if you take uh, which has been published in Germany in 1902. Uh, you can see, of course, it's a book about the professionalization of the Social Democrat Party. Uh, it, it has to be a party of professional, uh, of professionals. It's a, a reason why I'm comparing that with the uh, planning department of the Taylor. Uh, but not only. Uh, uh, Lenin is uh, wrote that the, 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 the Social Democrat Party ought to be, need to be an organization of leaders, Organizatia Rukovaditilie. So uh, the word Rukovaditil uh, was used uh, by Lenin for this purpose, but also the, uh, the, the word uh, voiced all the Social Democrats uh, ought to be Vajdia. Uh, for, for workers and so on. So, uh, what I'm meaning is that in those countries uh, that are old countries where uh, there were a spread of industrial revolution, there, there, there was a, a change in the vocabulary, in the language, because of this discussion, uh, the, the, the very uh, spread discussion on authority in various fields of activity, not only in the state or in the army, but in industry, but in the family, but in the, at school, in the schools, uh, in education. And uh, th th there was an expression of the a need for leaders. In all those countries, uh, you could hear uh, uh, people uh, crying 
uh, that we need leaders. We need leaders, for example, uh, uh, Cabot, uh, Richard Cabot, which, who was a professor of uh, social ethics in uh, Harvard. Uh, it's an old American fa Boston family. Uh, Richard Cabot was uh, saying, we need leaders in the industry, in uh, religion, in the army, in education. We need them more than anything else. And you had in France exactly the same uh, declarations. And of course, uh, you, you can say that this was common, but you had uh, national versions, national variant uh, of this uh, of this cry. Uh, for example, in Germany, uh, at the end of the, the the First World War, which was a defeat for Germany, uh, what could be heard is that we need one leader, one leader, one political uh, leader was missing during the war. So it's the reflection that. Uh, uh, we need not only leaders, but a, uh, one leader. So we can see how there was a, a very uh, a focus, a concentration on the building of the figure of the leader. For example, in France, uh, during and after the First World War, uh, there were psychologists and uh, manager, managers, management thinkers, they were trying to devise explicitly a figure of the leader or the physiognomy of the leader, the physiognomy of, of the chef. And what was at stake? It's important to, to try to understand what was at stake at this moment. Of course, there, were, there was a mass production which was developing, mass politics with very large parties, mass war, of course, not with the American Civil War, for example, but mostly with the First World War. That was uh, very much at stake, this, uh, this question of... Uh, uh, but... Uh, uh, the, the question was also the the, um, the disparation, the, the, the vanishing of the old classes of uh, that they were born to command, for aristocracy, for example. Uh, the, the, uh, the aristocracy has to be replaced of the the power, the authority of birth, the authority of uh, money. Oh, the, the, uh, the, the, also, the, the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, is the beginning of wh what has been called the era of the managers. Uh, and it, mean, it meant that uh, the entrepreneurs were recognizing they were unable to uh, manage their own companies uh, themselves, in person, uh, as I said. They had to delegate because of the, the, the big argument is, uh, is, uh, is the size of the companies and the complexity, the technological and organizational complexity of the companies. So they had to delegate to uh, managers. So this creation of the figure of the leader is uh, also the creation of a social aim, social uh, title, entitlement for people Wanting to emerge, wanting to uh, to uh, to become uh, leaders or chefs and so on. For uh, in 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 Soviet language, uh, it would be uh, uh, It was the uh, the stake is was to be uh, become a rukovoditel, become natchalnik, uh, and so on. So it it was. Uh, this very figure of the leader, which played a social role in, of course, a different role in those countries, a uh, different role at, uh, at various moments, and so on. What is important to notice is the role of the social science, 
sciences in this move, in this transformation. Because uh, the role of science, social sciences was very important, mostly psychology and sociology. Uh, it's clear uh, we think of, uh, in psychology, we think of the psychology of the crowd. And for example, uh, the main example is the uh, psychology of the crowd of Gustave Le Bon, which has been published in 1895 in France which was immediately translated in English, in German, in, uh, in other languages, and in Russian. In Russian, the, in 1896, there were two uh, editings, two, two publications of the uh, psychology of the crowd in St. Petersburg. Uh, so it was uh, immediately a, a worldwide bestseller. Uh, but not only the psychology of the crowd, but experimental psychology was very important. The, the first, the first uh, paper in the psychology of leadership in the United States was written in 1904, and it was written in borrowing uh, uh, a, a psychological test of a French psychologist, Alfred Binet, who wrote in 1900 uh, a book on suggestibility. The, the test of suggestibility in the, the circulation has been transformed in a test of, uh, on leadership. Uh, so uh, the experimental social, uh, psychology was used as a tool to devise what would be the best qualities of the best leaders, what should be the, uh, the, these best quality? How to train the, the pupils? How to ch train the students uh, to 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 become leaders with the best qualities? So it was a use uh, of the uh, psychology of uh, experimental psychology to the uh, for the psychology of leadership, which was growing. Sociology was also very important. Uh, of course, we can think about the two great founders of the 20th century sociology of uh, Max Weber and Emile Durkheim. Max Weber, his uh, sociology of domination is very well known, of course. But taking the history of these sociologies is very interesting because uh, it was a part of this discussion in the German society about authority and, 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 and Führung. Uh, and uh, he's, he, he began to wrote about the sociology of domination just before the, second, uh, the First World War. And uh, in, in 1917, he, uh, Weber uh, began to have a very much uh, a political career, uh, doing meetings, meetings all over the Germany. It, he was a, a late 1918. He was nearly uh, chosen as a minister for the new Republican uh, Constitution. So this was the situation for him to think as a sociologist, but also as a politician in Germany. He, he was, and an, his uh, conception, for example, of the charismatic leader is very much uh, marked by, by this situation. For example, the, his uh, constitutional project was to have a parliament, but he has no confidence in the capacity of Germany to have um, to have a very solid democracy and to have a democracy able to choose and to select and to grow leaders, Führer. So he was thinking that, uh, about the need to have a president, uh, a president who, who would be elected by the people, all the people, with, as he said, uh, charismatic qualities that make the true leaders. So, 
Weber is not only a sociologist who is studying what authority or domination is, he was also an actor in this situation. And his sociology was an actor of the, uh, on this situation. I'm sorry, I have to close it. I, I didn't do that. I see, I, it is closed. I see. Sorry. Uh, Durkheim, Durkheim. Uh, Durkheim, of course, he, Durkheim didn't write about the leader, but his, his, his way of thinking about what a society is uh, is very much an idea of uh, behavior of individuals that uh, behavior of individuals that, that are determined uh, determined by the society, the, the social practices. Uh, he is saying that soci society is talking to the individuals with the tone of command, which is uh, very much the drawing of his sociology. He is saying that authority is the main topic of the sociological research. Uh, so uh, also, uh, sociology is very much inside this uh, landscape on uh, authority. It's, it is very much in, in the landscape of the discussion about what would be the, the best way to, uh, to manage a society and to have authority in the society. Uh, so I will go a little bit further now because I see that I uh, I did talk already long, so I would like now to to have some remarks about uh, about action, about practice. In talking about the word leader or the word führer, or talking about the word uh, voice, uh, chef, uh, it's not. A, a, not talking about ideas, he's talking about a component of what it is to, to be uh, effectively, actually, a leader in, in some social surroundings. The, the, the fact to be, to, to be said a leader by other is very important for people, it was very important for, for people. It, it, the, the fact to, to be uh, named a leader, nominated a leader, was also framing framing the way of, of action uh, of people. So it is a part of the, of the actual uh, reality of the practices. But uh, uh, in this study, I, I, tried to, I tried to think about what was really uh, the practices of the leaders and how to think about that. And it's the reason why I'm, uh, I'm thinking about uh, the action of two leaders, mainly two leaders. Uh, one is a leader in the capitalist industrial world, an engineer managing uh, the production factories of the car, car, car maker uh, Peugeot. Uh, and I worked on, uh, from a very special archive, very close to him, which is his personal archive, uh, with papers, correspondence, uh, uh, reports, and so on, and uh, also uh, with uh, unpublished autobiographies, where he is just relating what, he's, uh, what he was doing, what he, he has done. Uh, they are very much practice of the practice. It's only speaking about what, is, what, 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 he, what, what he did. And the second, the second figure uh, is uh, Stalin himself, also seen at work. How did Stalin work? How did Stalin act as a voyage? Uh, and also how he did think about what he was doing as, uh, uh, as a voyage. Um, and also the, the archival material now uh, available is very rich and very close to him, of course, because 
there are a, a lot of letters of Stalin, uh, handwritten letters, uh, in particular uh, in the beginning of the 30s, from 1930 to 1935, when the telephone began to be important, when Stalin was in Sochi on the Black Sea, writing to uh, Molotov and Kaganovich, uh, they, they were staying in Moscow, in Moscow. And uh, for example, it's very important to, 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 uh, to realize that a letter, a handwritten letter, uh, took one day and a half to go from Sochi to Moscow with the Feldjäger of the GPU. Uh, and it's interesting to try to, to, to understand why, for example, did Stalin choose not to send a telex? He could send a, a, a telex with a code, with a... Uh, and why he did choose to send a handwritten letter? And that's very interesting. And uh, speaking about uh, speak, speech acts, it's very interesting to see that we can study his written acts. What, what is the effect he was uh, expecting from his letters? The effect not only on Kaganovich, not only on Molotov, but of, of all the organizations that the, the, those people were uh, commanding, directing. So that, that's, that's a very impressive material that can be used in the history of practice. And the history of practice, from the point of view not only of the norm, of the, of the rule, but from the point of view of what it was to design norms, to design rules. Uh, and that is something very interesting, because I think that the question is not the opposition between norms and practice. The question is the relationship between designing norms and acting in a surrounding where norms are. And, and, uh, so uh, both are practices. The practice of designing norms and the practice of uh, living in, uh, with norms. And, uh, and of course, with uh, the Peugeot engineer we, and with Stalin, we, we are on the side of the norm, of the practice of uh, writing norms. And what did interest me is to understand how to, uh, to, to understand uh, what it was to, to the political action. Because for me, it was rather easy to understand what it was the action of a production manager. Because a production manager in, in a capitalist country uh, with a market, with an open market, with its institution and so on, uh, the, the, the practice of uh, production practice, organizational production practice, is controlled by, by the market. Uh, also, what's interesting is that uh, there are objects, they are, they are sold on the market. So the, the, there is accounting, there is uh, v very much a, a material organization. There, there is a, con a obligatory continuity of the production to, to, to make the companies work. Uh, uh, for example, there, there is a, a continuity of the production of, uh, uh, of uh, cars or uh, uh, hiring people and, and so on. And, and uh, so uh, this practice can be controlled by the, the fact that the market is the judgment, the, the place of the judgment uh, of uh, selling uh, thousands and million, uh, millions of parts or, or of, of cars. It's very, very more difficult to, to know how to apprise the, the, the success of, uh, of a political practice. So we can try to, to do it from the point of view of the practitioners. Uh, but there is no material object 
that is uh, judged by the market. And it is why the, the, the archive of Stalin is so rich, because it it's leads us to uh, what was the way uh, a practitioner of the power, the way he used to organize, organize his own practice, but also the practice of other. And as you know, Stalin thought about him as a teacher. It's very much, much present in his letters, Uchitil, 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 Uchitil. There are a lot of uh, uh, papers with the word Uchitil. Um, and actually, I, I, I will take only one example, and I, it will be the end of my talk because it has been already very long. Uh, the, this example is the inspection he made in the beginning of 28 in Siberia. Uh, it is the end of the NEP, but the end of the NEP, because the NEP didn't work any, any longer, the, uh, the, the prison didn't want to give the wheat, didn't want to give the bread as uh, one say in Russian. So uh, Stalin, as general secretary, decided that the party, and not the government, had to, uh, to, to organize a demonstrative, demonstrative action to collect uh, the weight from the peasants. And he, he organized his inspection also to train his, uh, his companions. He, he sent some of them, of them uh, in various, uh, various regions, as Mikoyan in, uh, in uh, Caucasus, Andreev in uh, North Caucasus, uh, Molotov in uh, South Russia, and so on. He sent up people, and they were all writing to each other. So we are the correspondents of Stalin. It's a, one of the last time we can see Stalin narrating what he was doing to the other people. And the other people responding to Stalin about what they were doing and their place and so on. And that's very interesting because, but uh, it is known as this university. It, what's interesting is to think, uh, what is appearing from the, this paper is what the unit of action of somebody as Stalin. For example, I, 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 well, comparing with the production manager, the unit in action is, produ is producing uh, cars. A car is a unit of action. You can say also a, bo a model of cars is, is a unit of action. But what is a unit of action for Stalin and for such a government? One can say the importance of Vapros, the importance of Djelo, the importance of Dadacha, for example. But it means that it is not the, like the industrial continuity. You have, you have the, as uh, the sociology, the French sociology said, we had the, uh, the a form, which is a form project, or a form affair, or a form dealer. Uh, I mean, uh, Stalin was uh, mo mobilizing people for one thing. Uh, the, the, the stake is very, very big, because the, the, uh, he wanted to train his own uh, comrades to the politics of repression first, uh, first repression, not uh, trying to be to be uh, to be cool with people, and so uh, from his letter we can see he uh, uh, we can see how he was explaining to the other how to do. Первое. План заготовок выполнить безусловно и полностью. Второе. Борьбу за 
усиление заготовок поставить в центры внимания партийных и советских организаций, как окружных, так и особенно районных, отодвинув другие задачи на вторую очередь. Это, I will only quote that, because it's very important, is this focusing on one operation, just leave the other operation to another side, and just focus, uh, concentrate on this operation, uh, which has been defined as полностью uh, and безусловно выполнить план заготовок. Well, we, we could comment and so on and so on, but I, I want to say that uh, the history, the theory of practices that you, you, you are very much discussing here. It's not a question of, uh, of a theory out of, uh, out of, the, out of the, the world. It's a, for historians, for the historians, it's very much a, a question of what was the history composed with, made with. And, and take the way people were acting, the, not only acting isolated, isolated, but acting in a social network, social organization, make the thing very much clear. To be on the side of the designer of the norm, to be on the side of the people that have to work within the norm, is very important. So, uh, and, and uh, the way action, the way practices were uh, organized in, in the 20th century has very much to do with uh, what is practice. And th there were people, there were, uh, there were practitioners, they were thinking on what it was practice. It was the case of Stalin, it was the case of uh, managers, of uh, manager, management thinkers, and so on. So, uh, the study of practices uh, can help understand historical processes, but also history may contribute to the theory of practices, of practices because it is inscribed in the history. Uh, so, uh, now to conclude with, I would just say that uh, if the 20th century has been a century of leaders, of Vajdia and of Führer, of chefs, and so on, it's, uh, it can be seen in the practice of people, in the relations between peoples, between mat uh, material and people, but it's absolutely not sure that uh, the present century, the 20th, 21st century, will be also a century of uh, leaders. Vajdia, Irakova, Dietini. Spasiba. Just a point you, you can uh, raise the question in uh, Russian if you wish. Uh, okay. But, uh, oh, okay, yes. But if I could say, uh, I would say that also, uh, of course, uh, in the history, of the old ancient history, there were leaders, there were chefs, there were, there were, uh, there were Vajdiat, uh, and there were also, but, there was not, there was no leadership. 
Leadership is the history of the 20th century. The, the history of the figure of the leader is beginning with the 20th century, with the beginning of the 20th century. They were, they were chefs, but the, the, the construction of this figure of the chef is a question of the 20th century, of the, of the question of the mass society, but mass society is also a society of leaders. It's something which has, it is not very much stressed in the, all the lita, literature or ideology of mass society. And uh, of course, it's a very much um, nominalist stance as a Foucault would say, uh, I mean, uh, but it's very important to stress the importance of uh, the words. Uh, words make the things exist, if you wish. Uh, and wor uh, words are also a, a social stake. When I speak, I'm speaking about the history of the words uh, Führer, leader, leadership, or chef, and so on. And, uh, it is a social battle. It, there are political stakes, there are economic, economical stakes, there are cultural stakes. There are a lot of uh, stakes that they are discussed by people. It's, uh, so, uh, also, uh, what is, what is also constructing is not only a figure, it's cultures. It is cultures of leadership, uh, cultures where a lot of uh, uh, intellectuals are taking part. Not only intellectuals, practitioners, managers, people, they are not very much considered by intellectuals, actually. Maybe it's the reason why the question of the chef, the question of leader, has not been very much studied uh, up to now. And also for the now, for now, is this, will, be, will this century be a century of leaders? Actually, I don't know. I don't know what will be the future. But uh, what I can say is that uh, in, the, in the recent period, one can say since the, the years 68, uh, we were talking about last uh, week, uh, in a lot of countries, the question of authority changed. Uh, and uh, 68 itself was a movement without leaders. And now we can see a revendication, a claim not to have leaders in a lot of social movements, not only Tunisia, in Tunisia in, uh, in uh, 200, uh, 210, or in Cairo, in 210, but also in a lot of social movement. I've, I, I see them in France, I see them in the uh, critics of uh, uh, mond uh, mondialization. In the, in the critics of mondialization, there are uh, courses of anti-leadership. Anti Not courses of leadership, but anti-leadership. I can see that in uh, Brazil, for example, the, uh, the without land movement, the, the movement of people without land has no leader. I've seen, I've seen myself uh, student strikes without leaders. It was a problem for, for the rector because the rector didn't know with whom to discuss. There was no leader. So it, there is something. And this, there is a research maybe help by technology and by the, the networks and, so, and all the way to, 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 to make links, but it's not only a social movement, but in, the, in, the, in, in management too, there, there is a, a research about uh, distributed authority in, in the companies, for example, to, to try to avoid the vertical authority 
it's a, it's a way also the management is thinking about. Well. Am I rightly understand you that you know the leadership that emerged when you know there is a legion into some unknown and unstable world. So before the leaders, they were just rulers because the world was perceived as more stable. So you, you can rule if you know you know the game, and the, you perceive the world as more stable. And just a ruler who is you know, doing uh, this work. Well, in the 20th century, it was a mass society, unstable world, a lot of wars, and you know, another, I think, another vision of the future. Then you need a leader because you mobilize people to go into unknown. Is it, is it what you wanted to say? Well, uh, uh, yes, but uh, the, the fact is that uh, those stable words didn't exist, actually. Uh, uh, and it didn't exist a, a reflection about what it was to lead, what it was to uh, direct. Uh, of course, uh, there they, they were reflections on government. We, we can uh, talk about uh, government, uh, of course. And uh, that would be interesting. And what I'm st uh, stressing with, uh, with working on, on, uh, on leadership, and in French it would be on commandement, it, that it is not exactly what uh, governing is. Uh, it is really much uh, the, the, the direct relationship uh, of a leader with his followers or her followers. Also, it can be the, uh, it can be at a distance. The question of the distance, for for example, is very important. How to to uh, to uh, lead at a distance and so on. But uh, the thing is that, of course, lots of words did exist to talk about that uh, king is one of those rules. Captain, masters, maître, uh, rulers, uh, of course, a lighter in German and so on. All those words uh, did exist, but it didn't exist. Uh, an ideology didn't exist. Uh, uh, a literature focused on, on these topics, on this topic. And reflecting uh, on the face-to-face -face relationship of the leader. And, uh, which was uh, and uh, I can say uh, also uh, about government. I I had a very big problem with uh, Michel Foucault because uh, of course I knew his work since long, but I didn't realize. Uh, the importance of his concept of governmentality before uh, 2004 when uh, his courses at the Collège de France were published. And, and those courses are very important because he's saying that uh, governmentality was uh, beginning to appear in the 16th century and being uh, and uh, began to be spread really in the government practices in the 18th century, and saying that we are living the era of governmentality actually uh, now. And what was governmentality? It was not command. It was not order. It was not that. It was something different. It was not sovereignty. Sovereignty was. Uh, governing a, ter a territory by law. It was not discipline, which was governing the, 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 the bodies by rules and so on, and also by orders and so on. It was something to govern populations. And population don't obey population as responding to influence to inducement, for example, not to orders uh, in a direction. So it was not command. Governmentality, Foucauldian governmentality, was not command. And I was at this time working since long about command as a, and leadership as a, 
as a, as a phenomenon of the 20th century. And I think that uh, what, was in, uh, what was interesting, it also, it, it was a, a way to think about social sciences. What, what is the role of the social sciences? How do they uh, interact with the, uh, the social, with the society? Taking, taking Weber, Weber for, for example. Weber is saying about authority and domination that authority and domination, which, uh, which are the same for Weber, is the capability, the, the capacity of an order to be obeyed. Capacity of an order to be obeyed. That's authority for Weber. So, uh, Authority is coming from an order. And it is the possibility of obedience. So it's not at all governmentality. Government, uh, Foucault was inventing, devising a way of thinking about authority which was, from my point of view, much broader than a, a, a thought of authority as a question of order, uh, of a, a command. So that's a very, uh, very interesting that the 20th century has been a century of command, of uh, orders, of uh, leadership and so on, and also a century of governmentality. And that they, they can combine, that they can exist at the same time uh, in, a, in a society and interact between each other. I could comment further if you wish, but uh, for the moment... Uh... We might say that the leadership is needed in a crisis of governmentality. I don't know. I don't know. I have no thesis about that. <laughs> I, I, I have no thesis uh, at all about that. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, that, that's very interesting, because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that uh, uh, this language were, was uh, very much used by psychology, for example. Uh, the question of the will, does it work? The, the question of the will, uh, if you wish. What's interesting also in, the, in this history is that um, uh, the psychology very much built I its conception uh, from the example of the leader, actually. And personality was also a, question, a very important and broadening uh, concept of psychology at this moment. So, and the model for the personality was the, the, the leader with his will, with his, uh, his uh, voluntarism and so on. So I think that uh, uh, this language of uh, psychology or about personality was very much fit with uh, what it was at stake in the Soviet Union to, uh, to build a new country, to, to build the socialism and so on, and to rest upon uh, to rest upon not only the uh, politic of masses, but uh, to rest upon uh, person uh, or qualities embedded in the persons. Exactly as uh, you can uh, you can also think of charisma as a quality embedded in a person. It's it's a way to understand charisma. There are other ways to do that. But also that uh, that is something which was very important, and the, the culture of uh, of the 
of the will, not only of the masses, but uh, of the individuals. Uh, actually, that uh, I think about uh, some, uh, something Stalin said uh, several times. It was his conception of the leader, actually, which was not the, the Stalin leaders was not a leader with great qualities. He, it was not a man with qualities. The, the Stalin leader was an ordinary man. And uh, in uh, the, the November 7th of uh, 1937, just after the um, demonstration on the Red Square, he was uh, just meeting with his friends, and uh, and they were talking about what it was to be a leader. And and Stalin said, of course, it was during the the Great uh, Terror, and all the all the speech of Stalin to his friends. It was not a public speech. Uh, was to say that we are not like those figures they are admiring the, the, the elite and so on, and like the Trotskyite and so on. We, as leaders, we did emerge from the ordinary people. And it is the people uh, who cho choose us as ordinary people and, it, and the, the people don't like special personalities. The people like ordinary people. And it's the reason why they choose uh, Molotov, Chuba, Voroshil, uh, 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 which is a very interesting theory uh, addressed to the, the ordinary mass of the party, actually, saying, we are not uh, very special people. You choose us as leaders. Actually, there are other, uh, other moments when, when it has been published. It has been published, actually, the first appearance of this idea is uh, 1923, which is very early uh, in uh, Stalin's uh, career, of course. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not speaking about four types of uh, leadership. I am just speaking about four situations. They are national, but they are also transnational. I said about what was crossing the frontier. I, I, I could say much more about that and how all of that was at the same time very much national and international or transnational at the same time in there. Because what's done uh, with a, a German Slavar is not the same which is done with an English Slavar. Well, but the question is, uh, what's different? I would, I would take the, uh, the, um, the, the, the question of democracy. Because it's something which surprised me very much in, uh, in this study also, is that 
Um, when the uh, ide ideology of leadership uh, appeared in the beginning of the 20th, 20th century, one of the first questions was uh, its relationship with democracy. And also, you have different versions of uh, relationship with democracy. But, for example, in the United States and France, which were, uh, and uh, uh, Germany uh, before the war, the First World War, and, uh, and uh, the Republic of Weimar, uh, you have the, di uh, the idea that uh, leadership and democracy have to combine. Uh, democracy have to accept leadership, as well as saying people, uh, they were promoting leadership actually as a, as a way of building society. And, uh, but uh, so, uh, the democracy have to accept and to, uh, to help uh, leadership to accept the power of great men and so on and so on. It was a question, it was exactly what uh, actually Weber uh, was saying. It was not only Weber which was, uh, who was saying that. It was uh, very much. Mm, it was very much also the actors themselves. They were saying that in various uh, various domain. So, but uh, as you know, uh, the, in Germany. There, there has been the appearance of national, uh, national socialism. And for national socialism, there is an impossible compatibility between uh, leadership and, um, and, and democracy. Uh, for the, the Führer to appear and to install, uh, the democ democracy ha had to be destroyed, completely destroyed. So there is an incompatibility between. Uh, 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 leadership and democracy, which is not what Max Weber was saying. It is something else. It's uh, because uh, Max Weber is accused to has, uh, having prepared uh, the Nazism with his uh, thinking about the, the charismatic leader and so on. But it was absolutely not the case. Well, and for for the communism, it's something different, which is another combination between uh, leadership and democracy. As you know, there, there was uh, some kind of a preservation of a democratic facade, but it was just a facade in the, the condition of the communist international. There, there is a condition of uh, uh, the communist international uh, since 1919 uh, that the, the, all the communist party have to be, in, to, be uh, to have, to build, to organize, to uh, 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 a democratic centralism. Well, uh, you know uh, uh, what it became. Uh, also, the, the, the famous uh, democratic constitution of uh, 1936, it was the same. And actually, there is a, the paradox is in the constitution itself. Because the, con the constitution is the first Soviet constitution recognizing the, the Communist Party of the, as the leading force of, uh, of uh, the country. And, and nothing in the constitution is specified for the control of this party. There is no control on this party. So the, 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 this is the, this kind of relationship which is respecting apparently democracy but in fact, building a huge mess of hierarchies, which is very much confusing for Soviet leaders themselves, as you know. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, what I could say. It's, uh, the, 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 there is very much in common this fascination for the leader, the building of a leader as a, as a very important person in the building of society. But there are big, big differences in various countries. I could, uh, I could, actually, uh, in my answer, I didn't differentiate between France and the uh, United States, for example. I could. For example, uh, France uh, has been very much uh, uh, influenced by uh, Le Bon, 
by a psychology of Claude of Le Bon. And at the, uh, from the beginning of the century, uh, th th there was no constitution, for, there was no formation of any psychology of leadership based on experimental psychology, even exper Binet uh, experimental uh, psychology. In the United States, experimental sociology became a huge university discipline with specialists, specialists in psychology or in education, with uh, journals, with, uh, there, there were uh, hundreds of uh, papers about what are the best uh, uh, qualities, uh, and uh, after that uh, there, there was the behaviorism, because actually they, they were thinking, uh, trying to, to test the qualities of leadership, but uh, stating also that it was impossible. Impossible to, to have a selection of some qualities that make the very true leader. The, 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 so they tried something or something else, that, uh, but it was professions. They, they were professions. They were involved in that, which was, which was absolutely not the case in France. Well, I could, I could also expand on that, but. Masses coincide with the age of the leaders. When you have the mass society and you don't have the pre established hierarchy into which you are born, then of course you have to figure out who is on top or in front of you. And then the leaders rather than kings and rulers arrive. Here are the leaders. The problem though is, of course, the intricacy of the detail and uh, the empirical base on which you're building your case. Because your case is not, uh, you know, Le Bon and Tart on the crowd. Your case is managerial science in the United States and then managers in the Soviet Union and France, meaning very often industrial managers, not only party managers. This is not the case with the leader in the mass society of the revolutionary crowd or, you know, people getting on the street what Simon, Simon Le Bon has, you know, analyzed. So I was wondering uh, to what extent um, the question is not about the appearance of the new, but rather restructuring of the field of uh, the idea. And here conceptual history, and very careful conceptual history would be very important. And it would also reveal the differences between the countries. And here I think Mikhail's suggestion was important. Uh, to give you one just uh, two, two observations. First of all, in Greek language, the leader is the word for the bishop. It's hegumenos. Hegumenos comes from this, it's igumen in Russian. It comes from the same word as hegemon, which you know, of course, and hegemony. It's basically hegemostai is the, is the verb to lead. So it gets in the church uh, language becomes Hegumenos, which is the bishop. The bishop is always there because apparently he is primus and preparus among the brethren. It's also the same kind of democratic situation when one guy is in front of others leading them in the right direction. It's just that this life, a monastery life, or life structured as a bishopric is not very prevalent uh, before the revolutionary fantasies uh, killed the people. Now, how did this model of Hegumenos then become transformed into the general model of uh, Thuva, which is not just an excursion leader, as you said, but something it's not only it's not only an excursion leader. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, that becomes the leader of the whole people, right? And it's not the pasteur in French. It's not the, the shepherd. It's the leader. It's a different type of metaphor. How does it get transformed in Russian? You mentioned Nachalik, rather than Zavedovichi, or uh, there's another word you mentioned, Ruka Vaititi. Now, the two base metaphors are very different in Russian, in, between Ruka Vaititi and Nachalik, and I wonder to what extent this is reflected in the book, or one can find very 
suggestive uh, hypothesis if one worked on the history of concepts. Nachalik fits very nicely into what Hannah Arendt writes about Primus in her palace. It's the person who starts, but who is never responsible for ending. <laughs> it's the epitome of political action in her book, The Human Condition. I mean, it comes from the Greek word arche. Arche means to be at the top, and simultaneously to start rather than to finish. I mean, I can give the reference. Ruko I don't know how it comes from, I never studied it, but it's somebody who moves the, the hands. The hands of one's own or the hands of the child, I know, but one should take a look at how the concept originated. And it has a very specific pragmatic situation uh, referred to, which pragmatic sociology or pragmatic historical sociology should be uh, very aware of and pay a very detailed attention. Absolutely. So, uh, you see, for example, in, also in the church jargon on the verge of the revolution, it was not only Hegumenos who was the leader, it was also another thing, which I studied, that's why I kind of looked at them. It's what became in Russian, not председатель, but rather предстоятель, the official title of uh, the head of the uh, Russian church. And for Greek, this is Proistanelis, the one who pre-stands rather than the one who leads. Uh, the differences uh, might be trivial in terms of the parallels of the workers, but the original uh, philosophical conceptual differences and uh, Christian differences are very significant. So what I'm just arguing for in my lengthy presentation is for a very careful study of the terms. It might tell us something which would be distinguishing Russia from the leader in Fordist plants in America, or from the chef. I can't imagine why the French chose chef. Was it the Indian imagery? Or is it the chef as a cuisine? I mean, why the chef? <laughs> Chief in English is suddenly, there's a very strange connotation. And uh, Les Yekel, the chef is not Les Yekel, the Nachalnik. This would be no, 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 no. if we are careful for the reconstruction of the universe of meanings. I'm sorry, it's a very primitive point, but I just. No, 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 no. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Very important question. No, well. Uh, I have a, a chapter about uh, the question of translation, of uh, elaboration, about what are those differences. But actually, I, I'm not a very much, uh, I, I don't know very much about the Russian etymology and so on. But I, uh, one of the question, main questions, for example, is the difference between leader and chef. Because, uh, in, in, with the world leader, we, we have the, the idea of the emergence of a leader from a group, from a, a society, just a free emergence of a, somebody. A chef is more somebody who, who is nominated by, by some authority. So it's quite nearly opposite. But the question for me, uh, was not to discuss the, the slightest variation uh, of the of the etymology of the, but the, to 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 try to understand the uh, how to say not the actual not the present but the contemporary meaning of those words and what was socially at stake with the construction of those words has. Uh, as uh, well as a, a pretext of action or support of action and so on. So I am absolutely um, convinced that uh, those uh, variations you have uh, st stressing, for example, I, I was struck about the presence of uh, uh, the words. Uh, can be found, for example, in the, in the archive, uh, archive of uh, Putin factory. Uh, we are losing any that's That's very important to... to, to uh, of course, that, that's very different of... of uh, 
uh, from uh, what it is in Nachalnik. It's not only in Nachalnik. So, uh, but the question is not a question of the history of the language, I think. Or, or it is a question of the history of the language. But first of all, it's, the question is to appraise in which situation a, a, appeared such a world, or in, in which process, historical process, such a world was uh, disappearing, vanishing. And of course, uh, uh, in appraising a situation of or an historical process uh, can be helped by etymology, by uh, by what? Actually, I didn't thought, I, I didn't think. Abs uh, at all about him, hegemon, hegemon, or hegemonos. Uh, uh, I didn't think about that, and uh, I would have a chat with you with a pleasure about that. But uh, the question was to uh, it, it, in a sense, it was to make a situated history, a history situated in localities, in national localities, in, but also in circulations between localities, but also a history situated in time, a, a history of problematizations, of the way they were some groups, some people, they were problematizing the question of authority. And it was very important to, to me to understand why management thinker uh, from the economic world, were, why they were thinking at the same time about the same, the same uh, topics as psychologists, as sociologists, and so on, and the, 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 reciproc, the reciprocal effects uh, on each other. Well, it's, uh, so it's the reason why I make the same story of the leader and of the chef, even if it, it seems to be, it's, they, they, those words seem to be opposite. Because actually, uh, in, the, in the book, there is also examples of, uh, of people, they are trying to translate those things in the 30s. And, uh, uh, well, I, I won't, I won't, I won't explain about that. But uh, I think, well, that's. Uh, in Russian, there's a term which was a borrowed term, I think, uh, general and chef. General, uh, general, general, general. Obviously, nominated by the upper authority, so it might be coming from the French language. Yeah, of course. Can you can you can you open your microphone? Or, yeah. Or. Yes. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Or to the um, 
uh, factory plant начальник цеха, but never to say scientific institution. He will never be начальник отдела. He will be заведующий отдела. I think so. Uh, he will never be начальник института, but директор. That's it. So I mean that um, uh, you, you, it, it is a very specific word, which, uh, or actually it's, it can be uh, considered as several different words that look like the same. That's, that, that, that no, 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 no. I, I thank you very it's much. Not a question. Well, it's, it's not exactly, it's not a question, it's a contribution, I completely agree with that. Uh, but, uh, uh, but there is a dynamics in, in, the, in this. I think that, I, I, I've seen, on, on the history of uh, Putin of Kiro factory, I've seen that the, the world Natchanik was replacing a world like Xavier Duyushi. Uh, for example, it was replacing uh, from from the, the mid thirties. So uh, all the people were not becoming a charlatan yet. Uh, they, they were all uh, still directors of the various parts of the factory. But 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 the the world, the world has been spreading, and actually there have been a uh, well. That's a history. That's a full history. Because, for example, uh, staying on this point, um, uh, the Soviet borrowed the functional organization devised by Taylor and American uh, managers, and it was named Funktionalke. It was a functional organization with a, a daily bureau that they were helping the, 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 the vertical hierarchies just as, as a help, as a council, as a, as a uh, it was not a, a hierarchical power of those, um, those uh, departments and so on. But, and, uh, but the, the prolifer proliferation, proliferation well, uh, of a uh, lot of hierarchies in the Soviet economy uh, made impossible to, to keep this functional, uh, functional hierarchy, this functional. Uh, in, in, in the economy, there, there was the, the vertical line of, uh, of, of the uh, People's Commissariat, there, there was the party that was acting, there, but there, were, there, there was also the police since uh, 27, there was, there was also, also the the party state control, there was also the, the justice also co coming into the factory, and they also the trade union, as you know, so there were a lot, a lot of uh, uh, parallel or converging, more converging to the, to the, to the top uh, hierarchies. So in 1934, um, the Congress of the, uh, the victors uh, decided to suppress the Funktionalka. And there have been a discourse of, of, of Orjonikidze saying now it is no more Funktionalka, it's Nachalstvo, which is the, the government by the, by the Nachalniki. Uh, so it is a dynamic, I think. And I, I don't know very much about this dynamic, and uh, that, could, uh, that can be done a lot of work about that. But I think this has to be considered historically as a process, as processes. Uh, so I fully agree with you, but with this question of process, which, uh, which makes the thing changing. That, that's a question. Because, well, it's a big difference. Uh, for instance, uh, is it Stalitia Vashti? Is it Stalitia What is it? And for the Russian reader, whom I'm going to address uh, in my book, it's on comparison of that, it, it would be really meaningful. And uh, then, 
command more. Uh, what is it? How how would you translate it accurately uh, into Russian? Thank you, Nirvana. <laughs> well, uh, I've not the re uh, I've not the answer actually. I don't even I, I even don't know how to translate it in in in, in, uh, in English. I have to take with English people or American people to to think to to reflect about that. I don't know because it's not the century of the leaders. To so I, I don't think it would have been uh, the stability of Vajdi, uh, uh, um, nor stability of Nechalnikov. Но столетие руководителей может быть немножко побольше. Ну, э, э, это, это, это большой вопрос. I, 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 I should have also to discuss with German people. Столетие of the Führer. Right, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> And it couldn't be the solidity of the lighter too, because the lighter is, is the word which has been scratched by the word Führer in this period, I mean. Well, that, 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 that's a very question, the translation of the title. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And how to read it uh, properly in Russian? I don't know. I don't know. Just try. Maybe after it, uh, we could keep after it because it, 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 it has been something very much discussed in the, in the Bolshevik party. Since the very beginning. After it. After it. Uh, after it. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Lenin, uh, well, declared in uh, 1906 that the, that the workers' class needed authorities, not authority, but authorities, that they, it mean needed people they had, they would have authority. And after that, 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 that is very much discussing. You can see that in the correspondence between uh, Soviet leaders, they are very much discussing about uh, authority, uh, uh, to give authority to, to one people, to, to enhance authority. Because, for example, uh, I'm sorry, but it's uh, still uh, an industrial example. Uh, the, uh, the people coming from institute, uh, from uh, labor institutes, they were, they were working in the factories. They were trained here or uh, elsewhere. Uh, they had very much a uh, lot of problems with the, the, uh, the, the people of the factories because they, they wanted to impl implement norms uh, for works and so on and, and, and the workers didn't want and it was a problem for also the management it was not and there they, they, they have been a merger be, uh, between workers and the management against the normirov chikov uh, uh, so, um, um, uh, uh, what was the question? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm tired. I, 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 I lost the question. How to translate common more? Ah, yes. Uh, um, ah, yes. And, and, and so the, 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 the reaction of the, of the direction of the factory was to say, we have to enhance the authority of the Normirovchiki. But to en enhance the authority of the Normirovchiki was to enhance it very much artificially. So there is a discussion about what it is the formal authority and the personal authority or the actual authority of people. That was also a discussion and translation, actually. I couldn't have it in uh, the title in English because in English authority much, is much more formal authority than it is in French or even in Russian uh, or where the word is implying something 
which could, can be formal, but which can be also very much personal from the from the person of the. And, but it doesn't work in in, in English. The, the, actually, the word for for personal authority in English is leadership. Become leadership in the in the twentieth century. So I'm not finished with that with this question of translating. And, and there is another important topic I think I don't know to address it or not. It's like you know relations between authority and, and leadership, authority and responsibility, because what I have told that Machiavelli yes. is not responsible to anything. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's uh, Already, Catherine the Great knew something about that. When she was founding the Smolny Institute, she, she wrote a letter about the relationship between authority and responsibility. Yeah. And, and when we look to this you know, great break, the end of 20th, beginning of 30th, I think it's one of the major questions there. And you know, the responsible leaders couldn't survive. Mm. And I know from my own research, you know, so when responsible leaders were asked, you know, to fulfill the plan, and they told that they can't do that for the very, you know, rational reasons, and what was their fate, we know, and then they were replaced by irresponsible leaders, who mm -hmm. said, yeah, I will do it, and they didn't do, they, their fate also sometimes was very bad, because, you know, so, so to be a, a leader was, was very, you know, difficult at that time, but to be a responsible leader was absolutely impossible, and I think it was a destruction of responsibility at that time, and I always think what was the rationality behind that, because it was seemed to be very irrational, so the production didn't grow too much. And you know, so sometimes I think that it's like like you know, the drivers on the road. You want the drivers to go faster and they draw faster, but actually they, they do hectic movements, but it's not very much faster, but much more risky and irresponsible. I don't know if this comparison works, but so so it, it looks like a psychological, you know, decision more or less. So try to move, to move the whole country to go faster, but not a rational decision because it destroys. To 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 make who or to go faster to to, to mm -hmm. uh, for for whom to go faster? For the whole country, I think. What was the first? For the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leader. Mm -hmm. They wanted mm -hmm. the country to go faster. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, give more production. So. I think, and, and then and then you destroy the responsibility because the responsible leaders they see the very objective uh, you know difficulties in that lack of infrastructure lack of work mm, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. this why they can do that and they and then irresponsible you know leaders they, well. they took uh, the rules of the game and was it really fast in the end? No, <laughs> no. I, 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 uh -huh. I, I would repeat that I have no personal position about that. Uh, my, my position is to study the, the point of view of, of the people, the actors, and I couldn't have a position because I, it, would, it would affect the capability of uh, understanding the various uh, conception uh, in, the, in the empiric world, but uh, on the Actually, one of the questions which is very much discussed is the balance between authority and responsibility. It, it, is, it is present in this Catherine, which is much before the, the 20th century, actually. Uh, but, but, but after that, it's, it is uh, present in a lot of, uh, of writings about authority, that it has to be balanced. And for example, uh, one of the claims of uh, Soviet Rukavaditilia uh, is that uh, they had a big, 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 big personal responsibility, but no authority. And that is a discussion uh, in the press, in the, in the Pravda, in Trud, in, in, in uh, uh, other, other journals, and that, 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 is, that is a big discussion. And uh, so, uh, so th that is also a stake, uh, this uh, balance between uh, authority and responsibility. A stake which, is, which has various forms in uh, various moments and various places. Uh, 
Um, the question of rationality, I have no position about that because uh, I, I was struck, uh, for example, the, the, uh, um, I was struck by the fact that there is all a discussion about that in the Soviet leadership, about the rationality of the forced industrialization, realism of uh, such and such a uh, measure of, uh, of the plan. There is a discussion. And I was struck by one thing is that the historians, even the great historians, uh, a great historian as Robert Davis, who, who is one of the greatest economic historians of the, the Soviet Union, was using the, the word realism in the same the same way, he, he, he was thinking of, uh, for example, the, the conception of the, of the second five-year plans, plan, uh, in the same term as uh, the actors of Yenagi and, uh, and others. I was struck, and I, I said to myself, I, I, I have not to, to use the, 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 the these terms the same way because I won't understand what is realism for the people they were uh, talking. Uh, I, so, uh, and and that's something very important. And uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I can. I can. I can. I can just notice how the people they were discussing that. For example. There is a, an episode which is very important at uh, the Kirov plant. Uh, it is about the production of tractors uh, and tr production of tractors. Uh, the, uh, the, the factory w w was given an order from Moscow to build uh, 12,000 tractors in 1930. In 1929, it, uh, only uh, 2,000 500 were built. So 12,000, it was five times more. So all oh, the factory said, it's impossible, it's impossible. But saying it's impossible, it's, it is impossible to say that it's impossible. It was already impossible. And so uh, they, are, they have been a very intense discussion, of course, uh, with various episodes. And for example, the, the director of the tractor factory uh, was Ivan Ivanov. Uh, he, uh, Ivan Ivanov was an engineer, engineer trained before the, uh, the revolution. Uh, he, he, was, he built the, the tractor factory uh, at Putilov and he said, no, technically, technically it's impossible to have that. Kirov came, it was, uh, he was uh, not yet uh, well, he was already uh, the, the secretary of the Maybe it's not possible technically, but communicheski is possible. So where is where is? And they could make those tractors. They could, they could uh, build those 12,000 tractors. But just don't look at the quality of the tractors. OK, but they, they, they did build them. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.